I will not forget to change the screen. I will not forget to change the screen. I will not forget the change. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Uh, Roadmap 44 here, and today we're not going to forget to change the screen. You know, like last time. Anyways, welcome to this episode of painting a model in Substance Painter, because I need to do it anyway, so why not record it? And, uh, unlike the last video, we're going to be painting a different model this time. Not because I hated the last model, but because I already painted it. Yeah, might have gotten a little carried away. But, this model here in front of you is the model that we are going to be painting today. It's a little bit more of a detailed cabin model. As you can see, um, <laughs> definitely step up in detail over what we modeled in the previous video. But I think this will paint up really nicely. I got photos of this cabin. It's based on a real world model or real world cabin. And yeah, excited to see how we paint it up and how we put our own little twist into it while keeping it somewhat realistic. Uh, anyways, droning on. It wouldn't be fair of me to not show you the last model we did, the finished product. So let's throw up Substance Painter here. This is the cabin we modeled in the last video and how it turned out, how it painted up. If you remember, it was a somewhat grayish cabin, big white windows and stuff along the side from you know what we could tell. And yeah, this is what I came up with. Basically just took some nice wood paneling along the sides. I think this one is, yeah, this one's painted in 2K, so 2048 by 2048. Some nice little grunge on it. All the wood on this one is painted because from what I could tell in the photo, it actually seemed like it was painted. It wasn't just bare wood or anything, but I did go in and add some like edge wear and stuff. You know, some stuff to bring some detail out on it, add a little bit of a creative flair to it. So, yeah, that's what it turned out to be for a really low-poly cabin. I think I painted up pretty nicely. But this is not the focus of the video today. As I said, this is the cabin we're going to be working on. And I'm going to try to go through this video a little quickly today, just because it's uh, probably going to take a little bit longer than the modeling video, I would guess. Just depending. Um... This is the very last cabin I have to do out of the batch. I saved this one for last. So maybe we'll try the speed run at the day and just see how fast we can get it done. Or maybe not. Who knows? Anyways, let's get some tunes rolling here. Same track as last time because, uh, you know, YouTube and copyright. All right. So first things first, and I kind of... I kind of skipped over this step in the uh, Blender modeling video, but I want to go through and I just I want to make sure that everything or all shading is applied the way I want it to be. And we're going to do that by hitting normals and geometry data here. And what I'm looking for is I'm just making sure the auto smooth is checked on and then I actually have geometry data set here. So it's actually going to say clear custom split normals data if I do have split normals data on it already. Then I'm just going to click on each part here and hit the down arrow on my keyboard. And I'm just watching this to see if this ever changes. Oops, I got to have my mouse over this to something that says anything other than clear custom split normals data. Like that, right there. So, what do we have? This is a door frame that doesn't have any shading applied to it. So, we're going to say object shade smooth. We'll apply 30 degrees because it's 90 degree angles. And we'll just say add. And we're just going to continue doing that for the entire list. Alright, and just like that, there's only two items there that we had not applied shading on. So basically what we're doing when we do that is we're putting automatically a sharp on the edge. And that just determines, you know, well, if the edge is sharp or not. Which it is, because it's a 90 degree angle. So we want to have all that shading really applied to our model. We want to have it shaded the way we want it to be before we go to the painting stage. That way is when we bake mesh maps and Substance Painter, everything bakes the way we want it to. All right. Now, with that done, we're going to highlight. 
Actually, we're going to click on this to have one selected, highlight everything, go into edit mode with tab and hit A. And then we're going to go over here to our UV maps, which we already packed these with Packmaster, kind of like we did on the previous cabin we modeled. And I'm just taking one last look through here just to see if there's anything that looks odd, anything overlapping. Because we want to make sure we have all that straightened out before we get to the painting stage. All right, I think we are all good. So we hit tab again because we do not need that anymore. And we will make sure we hit save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have one more piece of selected. Hit A again to select everything. And we're going to go up here to export. Export as an FBX file. Paint, and this is cabin number 13, lucky number 13. And we're going to say selected objects, mesh for the object types, geometry, and edge for the smoothing. And then everything else we can save or leave as default and hit export FBX. That's pretty instantaneous. Hit save again for good measure. And then for the um, Start, for starting up a new project in Substance Painter, like I said, showed before we already hit new. Template, I always use Unreal Engine 4 starter assets. I believe this is or should be the default option for you. But we're going to go in here. We're going to select our FBX file. We're going to set... So this cabin we did at uh, 2048, and it was already starting to get a little blurry. So this is a bigger cabin. I'm going to say for the texel density that I want out of this, we're probably going to have to go 4096 on this. And I'll show you kind of how I determine what texel density I want. But for now, we're going to set this to 4096, and we're going to leave everything else as default. Hit OK. Discard changes on that, because I don't want anything to save for that project. And there we go. We have our cabin imported in. And controls are a little bit different than in Blender. I'm holding down left alt and then clicking and dragging to rotate my view around as well as middle mouse button to pan around. That gets a little confusing if you're jumping back and forth between uh, Blender and Substance because I believe Blender is, uh, is a control or is a shift? I don't know. At this point, it's muscle memory. But first things I do when I get in here is I'm going to go up here to not that, not that either. Wow, what happened to my... Everything got docked for some reason. That's weird. Okay. Um, first thing, environmental map. I like using this studio white down here at the bottom. It's this one. The very bottom with the white floor. That makes it so that the undersides of the building aren't too dark when I'm working on that. And then I will say, okay, temporal anti-aliasing is already checked. Subsurface scattering is already checked. I use linear, not aces. I'll put anisotropic filtering to 16. And that's just your texture filtering. Then I go into here for the shader. I do not change anything on the shader quality. Leave it as 16. I do enable bent normals. And that should be it. All right. So first things first, let's go ahead and say save as. And we're going to do cabin 13. And I'm not really sure. Let's see. i got to fix my standby one while I try to fix my texture panels. Okay, I, I think I have that how I want it now. <laughs> um, not sure why that got reset the way it did, but anyways, let's continue on. All right, so the first thing we need to do when we get in here is I'm going to go in here and to the bake mesh map section, which is under texture set settings. And actually, before we do this, return to painting mode, we're going to say... Drop this down, add an ambient occlusion channel. I guess we really didn't need to do that before we baked, but we do need to add that anyways. And I do not do visualized baking or baking visualization. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bake this as 4096. 
and this is just under the common settings here on the left. I'm going to apply the fusion. Down here at the bottom, I'll do anti-aliasing, super sampling, 64 times. Now, this may be a little overkill, but what this basically does is any bit of uh, graininess and like the ambient occlusion, this is going to help with that. So I just like having the cleanest textures possible. I go ahead and bake them at the max settings. And uh, this is something, you know, you may have to play around with because in the beginning when I was doing this, um, or painting in Substance Painter, I would have to go back and rebake a lot because I would miss something in my UV unwrap or screw up something with shading. And I just have to keep re-importing the model and baking over and over and over again. So if you're running into that a lot, it's probably not good to bake at the highest settings on your first pass. Go ahead and just put basic settings in. So don't use any super sampling. You can all go ahead and apply Diffusion and then you can set all the rest of the settings because it really doesn't add that much to the render time. But if it does for you for whatever reason on your PC, just go ahead and dumb down the settings a little bit. Go ahead and paint your model and then when you're ready to export your textures, go ahead and go back through and rebake it at the highest settings that you can on your computer just so that your textures are nice. But because I got the overhead and I can do it now, I'm going to go ahead and do 4096 right out the gate here because that's probably going to be my ending texture resolution. Apply the fusion, super sampling, 64 times. I checked off normal. I don't like baking normals because it does some weird stuff along the edges sometimes. But I will do world space normal because that is needed for some calculations. I do not do ID. Um, I do not do height. I do not do opacity. But I will check on bent normals. And... I'm going to go to ambient occlusion. I'm going to turn my secondary rays all the way up. I'm going to hit ground plane so that we cast shadowing on the bottom of our building. Curvature, secondary rays all the way up. Position, I don't change any settings in here. Thickness, secondary rays all the way up. And bent normals, secondary rays all the way up. And do secondary ray settings, like if you need to speed up rendering a little bit, you can leave those their default settings on your you know first passes or whatever. But then when you go ahead and bake your final version, I would recommend, if you can, turning those all the way up just because you're going to get the best definition out of those bakes. All right. Anyways, we got everything set here that we need to set. So I'm going to go down here, say bake cabin 13, which is our material. Oh, you know, maybe I should have gone over that because I already had it done. Um... I'm going to do Cabin's final open blender back up here for a second. Wow, we're 15 minutes in and we haven't even started painting yet. Um, <laughs> we need to make sure that you set a material for each one of your pieces. So the easiest way to do that is to pick one piece, go here and say add new material, like so, right? And then you type in whatever your material is. In this case, I did Cabin 13. I do not set anything for the textures, I just leave it as a standard material right now. And then typically what I do is I'd have this piece selected here, I'd hit A on everything, hit Alt L, or sorry, Control L, and then I would say Link Materials. And what that does is all these model parts in here get linked to the same material of this part, so they all become Cabin 13. And that saves you from having to go through your entire collection and clicking on each piece and assigning a material to it. So make sure you have a material assigned before you get to the import stage. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and bake this, and we will be back after it gets done baking. Okay, let's try that again. OBS was acting a little weird there. I went ahead and gave it a restart. I think it's just Substance. I, substance is a pretty big freaking hog, so trying to run anything else in the background is a little touch and go sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we're going to go over and look at the cabin. So let's change our display. This is what the cabin looks like in real life. So this is kind of what we're going to be going for. So we got those nice logs going down the side as well as some nice planks up top. It's going to be a green roof. And then it looks like some older, like almost railroad tie collar stained wood for like the decking. So this should be pretty, pretty nice. This should come together pretty nice. All right. So let's go ahead. And first and foremost, 
I need to find a texture for my logs because I don't really, I have, I mean, if I go in here and I look in substance, I already have wood punched in here and I'm in the texture tab and I kind of just go through and look at like the wood textures I have. I mean, I have some that'll probably work, but I think I can find one a little bit better if I go and I look online. So I'm going to go over to one of my websites I always frequent when I'm looking for textures. And that is this website here, Ambient CG. I will also link down in the description a couple more of the more popular websites I go to where I find some good textures, some with, you know, good selections, others with kind of limited selections, but all of which I found good textures on. And I should go ahead and make a note here today that um, a lot of the textures that you're going to see me, actually probably most of the textures, if not all the textures you see me using today, are textures that I have gone out and downloaded. I typically don't use the default textures a whole lot just because they are pretty limited. So I like going out, if I need a texture, I, I kind of have a texture in mind that I want. I'll go out and try to see if I can find something a little bit more specific. And for that, I have already picked out a texture today that I think is going to work good for these logs. And that's this texture right here. Because if we go back and we look at our cabin, we can kind of see we got that wood with that darker patches in it. And I think this is going to work okay. If not, then we may be able to go back over to our textures here and where is it at use something like this right here that's just a plain and then our plain wood and then we can add like some detail on top of that and worst case scenario but i do think i, I want to go over and i want to try this texture here first and foremost so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here and download it i always download as a png typically 2k i'd Typically, you don't need anything more than a 2K texture since this is going to be tiled anyways. And I'm not going to ever export over 4K. So we will go for a 2K PNG. We'll go ahead and download. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up on my desktop here. We'll say... And you can't see this because it is off screen right now. I have not forgot to change the screen. It is just off screen on a monitor that I am not streaming. But I will do you a solid and I will throw it over onto this screen once we get into the folder. So this is what we have. I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple things here that we don't really need. All right. So this is our sample material, obviously. Or our sample image and then we also have our color we do not use displacement we do not use a OpenGL normal but what we will need is we'll need this color the normal direct X and the roughness so if we go through here and look this is what our albedo or our color channel looks like that's our displacement that's our normal um, yeah that's our direct X normal this is our OpenGL normal and this is our roughness. So very, very simple to get this into Substance Painter. I'm just going to click on each one that I want. And I'm going to take and I'm going to drag these into switch screen. Got them selected. I'm going to drag them into our side panel here. And I'm going to hit texture for each one of them. And I'm going to say import into my assets or your assets I guess just because this is a texture that I am most likely going to use between different projects if I had something really specific that I would only be using for this model I would say project cabin 13 and then I would just pack it into the actual project file but in this case I want it for everything so we're gonna say import there we go now we got it we're going to go back over to our layers here. We're going to hit folder. And I'm going to say logs for the name. Hit a fill layer. Wood. <laughs> Just keep it nice and simple. And then down here at the bottom, we are only going to use the color channel. We're roughness and the normal. So we'll tick off everything we don't need. 
And then I'm just going to drag each one of these textures into the appropriate box here. There we go. Go over here to the logs. And let's make sure our... Yep, we're set to 4096. And we're just going to play with our scale or our tiling here until we get it kind of down to what we want. And it's going to be kind of hard to figure out what looks good. We need to kind of find a log that's got the grain going the correct direction. And actually what we'll do here is we're going to click on this box. We're going to hit exclude all. And we're just going to click on our walls here. And this is selection per part. So depending on how you have your parts combined or broken apart in Blender is how it's going to select them. So because I have all these logs joined together in Blender, it's just selecting them all when I do that, which is good. So now anything in this collection is only affecting these walls right here. It's not going to affect any other layer. And we can do the same thing on this wood if we wanted to, which we'll get into here in just a minute. All right. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the grain of the wood and I'm seeing basically what's going to save me more time leaving the texture orientation the way it is or going through and rotating it and it looks like i'm seeing more wood grain going the wrong direction so i'm going to go here to the rotation for this layer i'm going to say 90 degrees which is going to change the orientation of the wood grain and what I can do then is I can say white mask, add a white mask to that layer. I'm going to go to right here, the selection. I'm going to say what mesh fill is what it's called. And I'm just going to go any little, whoops. Okay, that may be an issue because it doesn't want to. Huh. <laughs> Okay, well that should normally just select the one, but it's being stupid today. So I guess we're going to have to do this a little bit differently. And to do that, I'm going to go over to this UV sheet. And I wonder if I can get it to not show... Yeah, I've never had to turn these off, so I don't I don't know if you can turn them off or not. I'm assuming there's probably a way to do it, but whatever. We'll just deal with it for now. Um, we'll click off of that just to get a good idea of the way things are facing. And basically what we're doing is we're looking at all these logs right here. The ones that are facing vertical have the correct wood grain to them, and the ones that are horizontal have the wrong wood grain to them. So I'm going to go through, and I'm basically just going to select everything that is horizontal and I just got to be careful with what I select here and make sure I'm not selecting any parts I don't want to even though it doesn't really matter because of that material or because of the uh, geometry masking that we did before but still I like to be careful I'm just gonna do that just clicking and dragging these are all vertical here, so those are good. We don't have to worry about those. And I think that is it. I think we got all of them. Okay, I think that's good. We will double check and we're gonna very easily find that edge there because if we don't, uh, we can accidentally rotate our UV, which is really easy to do. So be careful when you're dragging that over. If you do rotate it, just hit Control z real fast. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to look at all the wood grain over again. And I am just making sure that everything is facing the direction I want it to. And I'm looking at, at the wood ends as well. I think I'll leave them the way they are for now. But we'll probably go back and we'll replace these ends with like an actual end texture here in a bit. We'll just leave it textured how it is for the time being. 
but we'll see. Um, may honestly leave it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it, we'll see how that goes in a bit. It'll be a little bit of extra work doing it. But what we need to do now is we need to hit Control D on this to duplicate the layer. We're gonna say Invert Mask. Click on the image again. Go back zero for the direction. So what we just did is we inverted our selection, basically, and we just told it to flip or rotate 90 degrees, which corrected all of the wood grain on the other logs. So now we have the grain going the direction that we want it to. And basically what I'm going to do now is I kind of like already how this looks, but I'm going to play with the scale just a little bit more and just, or sorry, the tiling, and just to see if I can get something that maybe looks a little bit better. You never know. All right. And I think I've decided on a tiling of about six for these. So that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it'll do that. It'll just like save right in the middle when you're trying to do something sometimes. <laughs> Gotta get used to it. Now we got this, you know, grain that's... Uh, basically what we're just trying to do is we're, we're trying to make sure nothing looks too repetitive. Because these are tiling textures, right? So you're going to get repetition the the more dense you make it, or the smaller, or the more uh, tiling you do. So basically, I would just want to make sure it doesn't look too bad when it comes to that. But I think that looks pretty good. So before we do any more on this layer, I like kind of getting all my base layers in order, and then I go through and kind of customize things how I want. So we're going to click here, and we're going to do a new folder. And we'll say... Oh, we'll just call this one walls, add a new layer inside, and then we're going to X out of that, go to textures, and type in wood. Um, actually, we'll type in plank, So I think it's actually called planks. And here it is right here. I'm going to use this plank texture. Now this, I absolutely love this material, and we have an ambient occlusion, we have Albedo, normal, and just a roughness for this. So we can get rid of height, we can get rid of metal, and yeah, we'll leave everything else. So AO goes in the AO channel, normal into the normal channel, albedo into base color, and then roughness and the roughness. So same deal with this, we're going to geometry mask it, so we're going to click on just this top section here, because that is going to be the only section that gets these planks. Say, invert, and click on that. And now our planks are limited to just this section of mesh. Go ahead and save. Type in planks, just to keep things a little bit organized here, not that it's going to really make a difference, but... Now, what we need to do is I want to go through and look back over at our original photo here. And I'm just kind of looking at the size or the scale of those planks. Now, you could go through there because we can see each and every one of them, right? We could go through there and we could count, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. We could count the number of planks in there. Or you could just try the eyeball and get pretty close. It's you know it's all how you want, how much accuracy you want in that. And really, all I want to try to do is I want to try to get the seam of the board at the very bottom. So that's not going to be a big big deal with scale unless it just looks really weird at the top. But we'll play that by ear. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball this. So I'll have this image on the other screen. Meanwhile. I will throw you guys back on this screen, the active screen, and I'm just going to take a look. Eyeball here. So we got roughly about seven panels take up the solar panel here. So we got, what, six now? So maybe we go with like, I don't know, 16? Yeah, so that's pretty close. And we got our seams almost at the bottom here. So 
I'm just going to look at this here at the top. Yeah, we'll have a little bit of a... We have a seam right there at the top, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. So I'm just going to go ahead and we'll make it a little bit of adjustment here. Um, before we do that, though, we're going to look at all of our other sides. So that one's going vertical. The back's going vertical. This is going horizontal. Obviously, these are all going to be horizontal based off of our photo here, not vertical. So we need to do the same thing that we did for our logs down here. We need to make sure we get that flipped around. But because we're going to be matching these up the best we can, we need to do something just a little bit different. And I'm going to go ahead and just say, add white mask. And this will be planks underscore front. We're going to do one layer for each side. So planks front. We're going to go over here to our layers. And we're going to find our front side. Which is right here with the solar panels. We'll do the mask. And we'll just click and drag. And if for whatever reason you're clicking and dragging. That's not doing anything. It means that you do not have the correct color for the alpha channel selected. So obviously black is hide, white is show. So if it's on white by default, it's going to add two, right? But because we're removing from a white mask, we want black. Click and drag, and it's going to remove that. Anyways, um, I actually wanted to do the opposite, though. So <laughs> we're going to redo that. We're just going to say remove mask, and we're actually going to add a black mask. Redo that again. Um, and we want white, so we will only show that mask right there. So we have the tiling that we want, but what we want to do is I want to get this seam just for... Ooh. That's a bit of an issue there. We're going to have to fix that. That board is jutting out. I'll go back and I'll fix that in Blender here in just a second, and we'll have to re-import in and bake again later. Um, actually, I may f I may just fix that, and then I'll bake again at the end because OBS is gonna crap out if I try to bake during this again. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll just uh, we'll remember that this is an issue. I'll go back and fix it in Blender, and then at the end we will do a rebake again, just so we don't have to do multiple bakes. Okay, but what we want to do now is I want to get the seam down, so we're going to use the offset values here, and what I want to do is I'm just going to drag it to figure out what does what. That goes horizontal, so that means this one goes vertical. And it does not take a lot. Like, your inputs for these offsets are so small to get a large change. So basically what I'm going to say is I'm going to say 0 0.0001. And we need to do negative. Yeah, and see how much it's changing just with that much of a minute input. So we're going to say, uh, let's say like four. Okay, we'll go for six. And basically what we're just trying to do is we're trying to get the topmost part of that seam lined up. Just like that, because we want to make it look like the board's flush, right? We don't want a weird seam there. It's just the little details kind of help. Yeah, that looks good there. All right. And now we are going to control D, duplicate that, and we'll say planks left, right, or click on our mask, and we'll do clear mask. And then what we're going to do now is we are going to very carefully click on that one time and you got to be careful with clicking and dragging with this because it will select through the mesh so if you have like for example like when we do these wood pieces down here or when I do all this wood you'll see that we will probably inadvertently select some of these down here on the bottom and yeah you just you got to be really careful when you're doing this kind of stuff um, if you want to do it without issue, go into the 2D view and do it. 
and then you can click drag whatever but I don't know which one's which so I just clicked one time on this without moving the mouse or dragging and it's some usually doesn't affect anything if you do it that way but it can be a little weird sometimes and it may not select it on the first click you may have to click a couple times all right what we need to do now is we need to rotate this 90 degrees and now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to line these seams up the best we can and to do that we're going to do pretty much what we did on the front wall and we're just going to adjust this offset i'm assuming we're probably going to need a negative value um we'll try one zero zero one for now yeah that gets us where we need to go and then we're just going to add yeah, and like i like doing about two at a time but we'll do four in that one and then maybe we'll go with six on this one that's pretty close and we're just going to keep doing this for all four walls i'm going to speed through this just for the sake of time i think but at this point you kind of know what we're doing Okay, there we have it. We got all of them aligned now. So that looks pretty good. And we are on the right path because if we go over and we look at our image here, we'll see that it looks pretty similar. And we'll just need to do a little bit of color correction to get maybe a little bit more of a red hue in there. But we also got to keep in mind that it looks like this was taken near either dawn or dusk and in the winter season in Alaska. So the sun is pretty low on the horizon, so we get a lot warmer collars. So we really have to take that into account when we're doing collars on this cabin. Because if we try to collar it for this right now, it may be too warm when it actually reaches the season and the sim, or too dark. So we really need to consider that. And I think what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of color correction to it, just to give it a little bit more of a red hue. But I think for the most part, we're going to leave these textures pretty stock. But we'll see. We'll see when we get there. Um, but continuing on what I said before, I like to kind of get all my base textures in order first. So we're going to create another folder here. And I'm just going to call this one wood. And we're going to do all of our wood and supports and stuff down here next. So let's go ahead and save our changes. Haha, <laughs> you thought I was going to leave you on the screen again, but I remembered. Um, yeah, just to show what I, what I missed there, we're going to paint all these supports and planks and stuff on the bottom here. So to do that, we're going to type in wood here. And what I'm doing, wood pieces like this, what I'm really looking for in a texture is I'm looking for something that tiles really nicely. So there's not a lot of repetitive stuff. And the texture or a lot of detail that can repeat really quickly or become really noticeable in a texture and you'll kind of see what i'm talking about here in a minute um let's see where is it wood zero five zero just to isolate it a little bit more we'll add another fill layer um need to call our normal and roughness base color normal roughness and I'm gonna try usually I end up using a tiling, val tiling value of around 14 on this so we'll see what it looks like yeah that looks pretty good so as you can see it definitely repeats but it is a very clean texture with not a lot of like grunge or anything on it so it looks a lot better when you start layering like grunge and stuff on top of it, it doesn't repeat nearly as much. So really what you're looking for when you're looking for textures, the paint and substance painter, is you want something that just tiles really nicely. And then you're going to add your grunge on top of that. There are some grunge textures that will work really good in some cases. You know, you may have a wood texture that's really grungy. And for a smaller area, that may work great. But if it's going to be tiled over a large area, it's going to get really repetitive really fast. And you want to avoid that so 
I always like to start with clean textures when I have an area like this, and then I add my grunge on top of that. So let's go ahead and geometry mask this, and we're just going to choose which ones we want. And I do kind of 50-50 here, so to make sure that my texturing isn't too repetitive, I will use, let's say for these poles down here, I'll use one wood texture. For the top of the stairs, I may use another wood texture, but for the sides, I'm going to use the same texture. For all these panels here, I'm going to use that texture. For all these here or planks, I'll use that texture. And then, yeah, we'll grab that back one there as well. So basically what that's going to leave is the tops of these stairs and all these support poles here on the bottom are going to be a different wood texture just to kind of help break things up. So we're going to say invert on our mask. We'll just call this wood just so it's not a random layer name. And same deal as before, we're going through here and we're looking at the wood grain. I'm just going to go through and you already kind of know the drill, so for the sake of time, I'm going to add a white mask here, and for anything that is going the wrong direction, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to take my either polygon fill or my mesh fill and click on the pieces and exclude them from this layer. And as you can see, <laughs> just real quick, that's what I mean about the pass through thing. Right, so it will pass through the layer. So in cases like this, where if I just hit that, it's going to exclude it all the way around because this is a linked piece. So I need to go in and actually select every one of these edges. However, they are all facing the wrong direction. So <laughs> we'll just click on them and make it real simple. But for some of these standalone ones, or if we have another instance where we have multiple wood pieces joined together and some are going the wrong direction, we will in fact want to use our polygon fill and not the mesh fill. And just be really careful with what we're selecting. Okay, I think I have everything. So same deal on this. Just going to duplicate the layer. We'll go ahead and go in here and we'll rotate it 90 degrees. Click on our mask. Invert mask. Boom. Just like that. Now we'll go through and we'll double check and make sure we didn't miss anything or misclick anything. Which we shouldn't have because this was a pretty controlled selection this time around. All the grain looks to be going the correct direction. Yeah, so we're going to call it good for that. We're going to create another layer, and we're going to go ahead and... I like just keeping this separated out, so we'll call this one Wood 2. Name them however you want, however you see fit. And then I need to remember what this one's called. This is more of a pine style, and this one's got like knots and stuff in it, as you can see. So this one... You'll see what I mean about the repetition. This one will repeat more than the other one does. So we're going to take and let's see, this is 046. Add another layer. I believe it is just color normal roughness. Yes. Scroll down. Base color. Normal. Roughness. Try like 12 for the tiling, maybe. Alright, and what we're going to do is we want to select all the faces that we want this. So invert. So we get rid of everything. Or we could have said uh, also just exclude all. I'm going to click on the steps because we want them there. I'm going to click on the support poles because we want them there. And also... We're going to do this texture on all of our window frames, our outer window frames. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do those metal, so we'll just do them on the outer frames. Okay, now we got all this selected. 
Uh, these here at the top are just going to be metal. Those are solar panels. We don't have any on the back. And I think that is everything that I wanted selected. So we'll just click on this. All right, and basically we are doing the same deal here. We are just looking for anything that looks off and we got a number of them facing the wrong direction here. These are correct. These are wrong. This one's halfway. That one's halfway. That one is correct. So what we're going to do, just because we have more that are incorrect than we do have that are correct, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees to save us a little bit of time. Add a white mask. And same deal, we're just going to go through and we're going to select everything that is facing the wrong direction. Okay, I do believe I got everything there. So we'll just control D to duplicate our layer. Actually, we need to do that over this. Maybe. Oh, I hit, I hit control S, not control D. <laughs> That's okay, we need to save the project anyways. So, wood. Back to zero degrees for a rotation. And then we will invert the mask like so. And then once again, we're just going to go through and we're going to check and we're going to make sure the orientations are all correct, that we didn't miss anything. All right, that all looks good. Let's go ahead and save again. All right, and I actually did forget to add one thing to this, which are these top supports here in the corners of the roof. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and we'll hide one of these and we'll just select those, add them to the collection. And basically what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for anything, once again, that's facing the wrong direction. And we'll go through here and I don't know, these might have gotten joined together. Yeah, they did. So we're going to have to just carefully click on them anything that's facing the wrong direction. Now we got all those done, and the more I do this, the more I realize I keep missing stuff that I actually do want to add to this. And what we need to do is we need to add the edge of the roof to this. Because if we go over and we look at our cabin here, we got a metal piece, but then we also have a wood piece on the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and I think texture it with this material as well. And then we also have on the underside of our porch here, we also have these wood planks that we need to add. And then I think that is actually it. I think everything else is going to be painted metallic. Well, you know, besides like the bottom of the roof and the bottom of the floor, <laughs> but anyways, let's go ahead and get those added in. And pausing here real quick. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about with repetition. As we can see, we got the knot that's running along the side or along the edge here. You will run into this a lot. In this case, I'm not too worried about it um, because this is going to get some grunge and stuff on it. And it's probably going to help mask that just a little bit. But that is just something you need to look out for in your textures. Just make sure you don't have a lot of that repetition going on because that's what really ruins a good texture is just noticeable reputation. Repetition, not reputation. Anyways, back to masking. Okay, I think we got everything. 
just to make our lives a little bit easier here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this leather layer. And I'm just going to duplicate this one again. And then we'll just say rotation nine or rotation zero, and then we'll invert the mask once again. And what we do need to do is we need to go in here now and hit that. And we're going to go ahead and mask off. Maybe. There we go. We're going to go ahead and mask off the tops here. You might have seen me doing that, going back there and masking these off. And basically why I'm doing that is because when we add our roof in, as you can see here, about 50% of that is metallic or metal, and the other 50% is wood. So in Blender, I have already seamed this out, so there's a seam running along this. And that's just to help me paint that in a little bit easier, so I can go in here and I can actually mask it off. So yeah, we're just going ahead and going through and masking off this top section of the roof because we're going to have to come back and do that anyways so that the uh, normals don't overlay onto that metallic. The wood normals don't overlay onto the metallic and make it look weird. So might as well take care of that now so we don't have to come back and do it later. Then once again, I'm just taking a look at my wood grain here. That all looks good and hopefully I just thought about this but while I'm painting this because I'm not gonna repack these I don't think well I can I guess I'll have to modify these right and because I modify this and push it inwards it's going to compress the UV so I think what I'll do is I'll probably just repack only these boards into their spaces that they were in before. Since they're going to be smaller anyways, it shouldn't be a big deal. That way we don't have any skewing or anything on the textures. But once again, I'll save that up for a little bit later. Because I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Anyways, let's see. What do we have that we need to do now? We got all that textured with wood. What do we want to work on next? Um... Let's, let's go ahead and we'll start on the roof. I could very well do the deck or the underside of the roofs or whatever, but I think I want to get onto the roof real quick just to kind of change things up from wood textures for the time being. So let's go ahead and make another collection and we'll just call this roof. What's it? Is this just called? Uh, I guess they're called groups in here. Eh, I'm just used to calling them collections. That's a blender thing, I guess. Whatever works, folder, collection, group, same deal. Um, and we'll say, we'll just call it metal. Eh, whatever. All right, for this roof, we are not going to use the height. We are going to use uh, color value, roughness, metallic, normal, and I think AO. So we'll leave all those in there. I'm going to type in metal in my textures tab here. And I'm using the texture tab a lot because most of my materials are just straight tiling textures. However, if you're downloading like smart materials or something like that, obviously they're going to be under these tabs here. And we will get to using some of these in just a bit. But the majority of my textures that I use are all tiling textures. Anyways, um, I think we're just going to go with this Corget 2. Actually... Well, let's go with sheet 002. So this is just a core good uh, metal texture. So we got our AO here. We'll slap that on. I think this is roughness. No, that's collar. We are not going to use the collar texture. We're actually going to use a collar. And you'll see why here in just a minute. But we've got our metalness or metallic texture. We'll throw that in there. We're going to use the first normal here because I got a couple different variations of the normal that I made. But this is just the standard normal, uh, DirectX normal. And then we got our roughness here, which we'll throw in. And I cannot see how dense this roof is because it's got snow on it. So I'm just going to have to take a guess. <laughs> So first and foremost, we're just going to do this. 
and then actually we need to invert that invert then we are going to do for this metal only the roof top invert that so basically what we just did is we said this material here should only go on the very top of the roof but everything in this collection we want to affect the top of the roof and the sides of the roof because we're then going to do that metal piece along the side and we're just going to go ahead and shove it into this collection here anyways what we're going to focus on right now is the roof so we'll mess with our tiling value until we get something that we feel is correct we'll try try like 19 maybe and the biggest thing I worry about is I have another building I painted right next to this one and I always think about it like I, I want the texture panels to be roughly the same size so they don't look like wildly off in the sim. So that may be something I have to consider later when I get this model into the sim. I may actually have to come back and adjust the tiling on either this building or the other just to make sure things look more uniform. I don't really have a good method for saying like, okay, we need to make it tile to this size and it's going to be this scale because depending on your UV pack, it's going to be a little bit different. Anyways, I think I'm happy with this 19. Let's go, just for giggles, let's go ahead and try 18 as well. That may be a little bit big. That's not too bad, though. Let's try 18. Let's just roll with that for now. And if I have to come back and change this later on, after I see it in sim, that's simple enough to do. Alright, so basically what I'm looking at is I'm looking at what each edge of the texture looks like. We've got a little bit of a gap there. we got a little bit of a gap there. So I want to kind of even things up so it's yeah, somewhat evenly spaced. So I'm going to look at this side here. Play with their offsets to figure out which one's which. Reset that one back to zero. And yeah, we're going to be using a positive number. So 0 0.0002. And we'll just go to the other side and we'll see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty even. I just don't like having one of these ribs like right on the edge. Makes it look like it's actually kind of cut off. You could play with it all day if you really wanted to and make it perfect, but... Yeah. We're just trying to get something close. All right, next thing we're gonna do now that we got our metal done for a roof is we're gonna hit save first and foremost. Get a drink there so the old windpipe doesn't tire out. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a white mask to this. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on creating a very basic roof cap so basically, so this just doesn't repeat over the top here. It looks kind of weird because this you're not going to have something like this in real life. You're going to have something covering the seam. So you could, in theory, do something in 3D in Blender if you'd like to. I have done that in the past, but something I like to do just to keep things nice and low poly is I'll just paint it on. So I got something that's really basic that I've come up with. And all I got to do is I got to put that white mask on. I just find my roof piece here. And we see we got the seam running along the top. We'll take a paintbrush. We'll find the square paintbrush. We want to change our spacing at the top to 1. I just go ahead and type in 0 so it uses the lowest value possible. And then, as we can see, it's still spread out over here in our preview window. We're going to go down here to jitters. And we're going to turn our jitters all the way down so that it has a nice even flow the entire time. And we'll see now that it's more of a rectangle than a square, right? And it's going long ways against the direction we want to. So we need to turn this brush 90 degrees. And to do that, we are going to go to the angle here on the brush settings, type in 90, then we got a 90 degree angle. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out 
what we want for our size and I think we will do we'll do something like that maybe and all I'm gonna do now is I just want to get this as big as I can make it let's just go ahead and uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll go on the full screen by hitting tab there so we can zoom way in and we'll just do a check yep it is working we get the right color selected and I'm just gonna line the edge up as close as I can with the edge there we will click once I'm gonna hold down shift and control at the same time so we locked that angle click all the way across Excellent. turn on caps lock but then we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna go back the opposite direction just because sometimes it screws up and it may get a little weird on one angle we're gonna do that same thing for the other side and then we'll do down the center just to make sure we didn't miss any pixels there in the center there we have it now we have a perfectly masked off piece on the roof here we'll hit tab to get our UI back click on our layer again and we can look at our roof here and we can see now that we got a nice masked off piece now what we're going to do next is we need to figure out what we want to do for our roof color and as we can see by our preview it is this nice green color so we just need to decide on which green we want to go with and actually we will keep this up because I'm going to throw the browser window up here and I got a little bit of a cheat I do for this I got my folder here that I keep for bookmarks just to do with this and I like visiting roofing websites because they have these nice handy dandy color charts <laughs> and you can actually select from this the correct color for an actual realistic roof collar instead of just trying to eyeball it. So it's either going to be this classic green or I can go to my other bookmark here, another roofing website, and they have this evergreen as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this over on my other screen. Actually, we're going to keep it on this screen so the collars stay the same, and we're just going to kind of eyeball it. And I think it looks pretty close to the actual evergreen collar. So I think we're going to try the evergreen first. So I'm going to keep this thrown up on my secondary monitor here. If you have multiple monitors, you can do this as well. If you have a single monitor, this is going to be a little harder. You can probably just grab your uh, substance painter window like that, right? And scale it down and then throw this over here like that and probably select it that way. But because I have multiple monitors, I'm going to make use of that. And I am just going to take my metal here or go down to our collar channel. We get this eyedropper and I'm going to go over and hover over the collar that I want on the website. Boom. Just like that. We can select collars off screen. So it makes it really nice for the workflow. I don't have to go import it into or you know take a screenshot, import it into Photoshop or GIMP and pull a... Uh, a hex code value from it. So we got the nice green roof on here now. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna select this value and we're gonna say add another fill layer. We'll call this base color and we're gonna say metallic roughness and color we're going to go here, we'll paste the color in for this. And then we are going to make sure that this base color is below our metallic or our metal corrugate on the layer. So now if we go in and we look at our base color channel, we'll see that our base color matches exactly the same, but our materials look completely different. So what we are going to do in this case is we need to match the roughness and metallic values. So the easiest way to do this on this flat color is we're just going to go in here and take our roughness slider and roughness view mode here. And we'll just drag it till we're pretty close on our color match. And we'll do the same thing for our metallic. There we go. Just a little bit less 
than 1.0 on the metallic, just to try to match it as best as I can. And there we go. Now, just our lighting around here. Now we can tell that the materials look very, very similar. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our mask here on the metallic, or on our uh, metal layer, and say, uh, copy mask. We will paste another fill layer in here, throw it above that metal, and I'm gonna uncheck everything except for height. I'm gonna put in a value of 0 0.05 for our height, and then we'll paste in to mask. And just to make sure we only have this affecting the roof, we're gonna do that right there. So basically what we just did is we added a height value along the edge of the seam here using our mask. So it adds just a little bit of height difference. Obviously this in real life would be raised up over the top of the metal paneling, but we can only get so close when we're painting 2D. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go in there with a brush or maybe there's a better way to do it. I, honestly, I haven't really gone any farther into it. Uh, but you could try to paint maybe a little bit of shadow in there just to give it a little bit of a height look. But I find that, you know, at a distance, this usually works pretty good in the sim. You're just creating that kind of step. And this, even though it looks like it's inset or lower than the roof panel, it is actually raised above it. But that's just a nice cheap way to do a roof cap. And it makes the building look a lot more appropriate more like it would in real life. Um, okay, what else we need to do? We need to take our base color here and we need to add a white mask to it. And we're gonna mask off the bottom pieces here where there is wood. And we just make sure we do that all the way around. So now we got a nice wood for the base and then we have uh, our mask there to just make the top of that piece metal all right let's go ahead and save all right now as you can see things are really starting to come together on this model we actually look like we're starting to get a decent building painted out and we don't even have any grunge or anything on this yet besides what comes in the default textures. So it's already looking really good for what it is. All right, what do we want to work on next? Um, maybe we go ahead and we'll start doing some of the metal frames. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to check that off on the search and we'll go to all libraries. I'm going to type in metal. I like using this machinery one here. I'm just going to drop this on the top of my stack and I will get rid of the rust and the dust layer. I don't typically use those. I will keep the dirt layer on for this. And then I have over on my second monitor, I'm not going to show it just because I got a bunch of other stuff written in there. Um, but I have a little cheat sheet where I keep like common values, common hex values for different colors I may use in substance. It's kind of the same idea of if you watched my previous video where we modeled the cabin in Blender of keeping that one Blender file with a bunch of different parts. It's all common stuff that I'm going to use over and over again. So it just speeds up my workflow having that in there. I don't have to go and open up another project reference that for what the color, the settings are. It just makes things so much easier. So um, one thing I do want to consider here when I'm doing this is I'm gonna go over on my secondary monitor. We'll throw it up so you look as well. I'm looking, the door is white. The trim looks to be that same white color as well. I don't know if I'm gonna go for this bright, uh, for a bright white or if I'm gonna go for a duller white. I'm gonna go ahead for the time being and set this to the duller white that I have inside my text document. And worst case, we can always just set it to pure white later on if it looks off. Um, same deal with this. We're going to do geometry masks. So exclude all. 
And then we're going to go around and we're going to hit all these window frames here. Since these are all going to be painted white, the door is going to be white as well, as well as this window trim here. Um, yeah, and that's going to be white as well. And actually, even the solar panel edges are white, so we'll just make those white. Make those white. Got the window in the back. Okay, and I think we have everything that we want painted that metallic white painted right now. Now we'll see, because this is a smart material, I think this, yeah, smart material, it's already got some like grunge and stuff in here for the door. I will go ahead and leave that there, and I'll just do less grunge overall on the door when I go through and I do my grunge layers. But for the time being, we'll just leave it how it is. And we really shouldn't have to do anything with this layer past what we just did. I can leave this pretty stock and be fairly happy with what it is. But we're just taking a quick look around either way. And just to get a little bit of contrast in there, we're going to go ahead and do our glass. And I, I do glass one of two ways. Or, well, I guess I should say two different ways. But I'll pick one over the other, depending. Um, sometimes I may want to do, like, emissives in the windows. So I have uh, a blind texture that I'll throw in the windows. And if I'm going to go that route, I typically will not pack these window frames into the texture sheet. I will leave these separate or leave them out just so I get higher texture density. And then I will just do all the window materials in Blender. In this case, I'm not really sure what I want to do. The, all the windows are pretty dark windows on all these models, so I'm just right now going with the paint on black method. And I, I don't actually use flat black, 000. Though, um, I use a little bit lighter shade of black, just because I think it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to throw a new layer in here. We're just going to use color and roughness for this. And I use this right here, 19, 19, 19. It's kind of like a charcoal black almost. And this doesn't look as harsh in the sim. As you can see, it's just lighter black. But once we go through and we add roughness, or take roughness out of it and make it more metallic, it gets darker. And then once you blend it with everything else around it, it kind of darkens up anyways. So really, I like, I like the look of this black a little bit better if I'm just going to do blacked out windows on my model. Because obviously I'm not doing an interior or anything on this. So let's go ahead and name this model, or this layer, Glass. We're going to go up to our geometry mask and say exclude all and just click on the windows. Oops, those are solar panels. All right, there we go. Now we got our windows. If we look at them, they're nice and reflective looking. Reflect with nicely with their light. And I'm going to do one little thing while I'm here just to kind of tie things together. I'm going to add another fill layer and call that sand cavities. Because when I go through and I add grunge masks to this, because it's kind of hard to figure out what the mask is called or what mask I used. So it'll be under the, the uh, Smart Masks tab here. If we type in cavities. I like using the sand cavity. It's You'll see when I go and I drag and drop this on there. There's not really anything that says sand cavities on any of these layers. Like if I go into the settings or anything like that. So once I drop this on there, if I want to go back and figure out, okay, I use this mask for this material, like, you know, six months down the road, I have no idea which one I used. So I just named the layer what it is, and that way I know, okay, I used sand cavities for this one. Seems to work pretty good. Anyways, 
let's go ahead and we'll click back on the main texture here. You'll notice we didn't do anything other than roughness on this. That's because we are only going to use a roughness value. And you can see what the sand cavities layer is doing. It's adding just a little bit of grunge grime along the inner section of the window. And once we start grunging this cabin up a little bit in the near future here, this will help kind of tie things together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a window that's a little bit bigger, like this one here. And I'm just looking at how the grunge looks on that. It's pretty thin. So we'll go and we'll use these windows here as reference since it's thicker. And basically what I want to do is I just want something that's just kind of noticeable. Like if we go up too much, it gets a little too grungy, right? So we'll just kind of... Oh, we'll just back things off a little bit. Actually, I almost kind of like 0 0.3. So I think we're just going to leave it at 0 0.3, just because it gives us a little bit of grunge around, along the edges there, and we can always lower that later on if we think it looks better, or, you know, whatever. We'll just add that in there for now, since we're at this stage. And then we'll go ahead and close that up, and hit save. Alrighty, continuing on here, what do we need to do next? I'm going to go back over I'm going to look at my reference photo. We have the poles we need to do. We need to do the top of the deck. Uh, we got the solar panels that we should do. And the underside of the roof and the underside of the building. And that's... Uh, doorknob and chimney. That's all we got to do as far as adding materials to this. After that, it's going to be adjusting materials. And then we go into the grunge stage, where if we're going to add any sort of grunge to it, we do that at the very end, once we're happy with what our base materials look like. So let's go ahead and we'll swap back over to Substance. And let's go ahead and do our deck. So we'll add another folder here, call it deck, fill layer, we do not need height, I don't, yeah we don't need metal, we will need color, normal, roughness, and AO for it, so it's called plank, plank 021. And I've used these uh, materials so much that I kind of know what material is what by looking at it. Like, I know this one's ambient occlusion. I know that's color. Obviously, the purple or blue ones are your normals. And then the darker gray is usually your roughness. Obviously, that's going to depend on how rough or how shiny the material is. But typically, like, when I import these in, if they're not already named appropriately, I like to name them appropriately. Just so I know what I can hover over it and know what I'm putting into each channel. Anyways, let's go ahead and play with our tiling here on our deck. And we are just going to have to guess as far as how big or how small we want to make our tiling here. And I think I'll go for a little bit bigger than this. Let's try maybe like 18 on that again. And I could go and look at reference photos for this all day if I wanted to, but... I'm just trying to look get something that's, you know, pretty believable. Um, I may actually go a little bit bigger. Let's try like 16. We'll actually try, uh, we'll try 14 here. All right. And basically what I want to do is we see the seam that's running along the front edge here. I want to try to get the seam lined up with this front edge. I'm not going to worry too much. Actually, I may have to take a little bit different of an approach here. Um, yeah, we're going to do this a little bit differently. So what we need to try to do is we need to make this a little bit bigger because we're going to try to match that front seam here along this edge. And then we got this back seam here is already running along this edge just so things look scaled appropriately. 
So I'm just going to play with my tiling and make very small changes, and then we'll use the offset and make very small changes as well, just to try to see if I can get things kind of lined up appropriately. All right, there we go. It takes a little bit of back and forth, but you can get it to look right. Um, obviously, it's you know it's kind of weird having a seam right there on the corner, but I want these boards to look appropriately scaled, and we'll try to cover that seam up with a little bit of grunge here later on, just to make it a little less apparent. So let's go ahead and we'll geometry mask off the top of this, and we'll do the bottom as well. Invert. And since we just did a few minutes of work there getting that right, let's go ahead and save so we don't run into any issues with the crashing on us. Even though, personally, I've only had the Substance Painter, I think, crash a couple times on me. It seems to be pretty stable most of the time. We got our deck, and we can see that our planks are going two completely different directions here. And actually wonder if I have. Let me look through my reference photos here. I don't think I have any photos on top of that deck. There is one online, uh, but I don't think I downloaded it. I'm just trying to figure out if the wood is running long ways or if it's running... Yeah, it's running the direction we have it. Okay. So we'll leave it the direction we have it now. So on the bottom here, we're going to go ahead and on our planks layer, we'll just select that off with the geometry mask tool. And then we'll say duplicate. Same deal as all the other times. We're just going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then we'll say exclude all. And we'll click the bottom. That way is our planks run in the correct direction. And now to make this believable, we want to make sure we line our seams up as close as we can. Because if we go to the edge here, we can see that the top seams are not aligned at all with the bottom seams. So we're just going to take our bottom layer here and we're just going to play with the offset values until we get it approximately matched up. Just so that if you're looking at it from an angle like this, right, it's going to look appropriate. Obviously, nobody is going to be able to get far enough underneath it, or probably even have the thought to get underneath it and look like this. But, you know, the closer we get it, just the more solid all around it is. Alright, there we go. That looks pretty aligned. Okay. What do I want to work on now? Let's go ahead and get our aluminum knocked out just because that's really easy to do. I like using this one here, just aluminum brushed worn. It's got a really nice look to it. This is a default material. And what I'll do is I'll end up going in here and we got this like brushed look to it, right? I don't really like that for most of the things I put it on. So I'll typically just check that off or just delete it all together. And that leaves us with this nice, like, metal with all this kind of grunge on it. The scratches and stuff like that. So what we're going to do, geometry mask again, exclude all. And then we'll go up here, we'll click on our chimney, because we want it on our chimney. Um, I think... Let me look at a reference photo here. Well... I can't see the doorknob. The doorknob is on the wrong side of the door, though. It should be on the left side of the door, not the right side. So that's something else I can go and I can fix in Blender. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with aluminum on these as well. Easy enough. It's either going to be aluminum or gold. And in the photo, from what I can tell, it doesn't look gold. <laughs> it looks more aluminum, so we're going to roll with that. Um... Oh, then the little 
plate here at the bottom of the door is going to be aluminum as well. There we go. So that's all the aluminum done. So now we can do either of these poles or we can do the underside of the roof. And then we also have these solar panels that we need to get to as well. And the lights. Mm. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just do the underside of the roof just because that's going to be a pretty, I think, straightforward one to do. I'm going to use a plywood. It's going to be a texture. These are textures I have downloaded. I don't remember what side I got these off of. You can search around. You may be able to find them. Uh, these are going to need color, AO, metalness, normal, roughness. So the full set of textures. Except for height. We're not going to use height. Okay, we'll put on base color. That was AO. That was metallic. That is normal. And this should be roughness. Yep. Okay. And I need to get the scale for this right. I don't have a lot of room to play with on the underside of the roof here. So I'm going to look at underneath on the bottom here. So let's go ahead and we'll geometry mask these off. Exclude all. Click that. Click the underside of the roof. And then what I can do is I can set this to just base color. That was it's not taking on any shading and I can see things pretty clearly. We see we got our screws here. So it's pretty big right now. So we're just going to adjust our tiling. Yeah, to get it down to, you know, something a little bit more appropriate. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want it to look right. Obviously, if we look at our screws, we can find our screws in it. Our screws are still pretty big. Um, so we try maybe like... Let's try like... Oh, hell, let's try 14. Seems to be the lucky number. Yeah, you really can't even tell that there's screws in there. And the planks are somewhat appropriately sized. Now, because this is on the bottom, uh, you're not, and it's a big area, you're not going to really get around having this repetitive look to it that much. But because it is on the bottom and it's not in your face, and, you know, it is what it is. I don't, I'm not going to go out of my way to make it look too, you know, non repetitive. Just because, I mean, when you come in here and look at it, how are you going to look at it? You're going to look at it like this, right? Uh, you're never gonna go like under the ground and look at it like this so the best you may get is like from the ground like something like this maybe right and it's you're gonna be so close to it it doesn't look too bad so we will do that and this is pretty dull so we'll go and we'll add some like saturation and kind of brighten this up a little bit um, actually let's go ahead and do that now we'll go ahead and we'll right click on it we'll say add filter um, going to uncheck everything except for color and say HSO. And then we will play with the saturation. Maybe just bump it up just a little bit and as well as lightness. Uh, I don't know about lightness actually. Set that back to default. At least saturation. Add a little bit more color back into it. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm just like I'm trying to make it not stand out too much from the materials around it obviously like well you know honestly maybe I shouldn't even do this part yeah I'm not even gonna do this part yet I'm just gonna leave that we'll go ahead and delete it actually because these top pieces of wood here are actually going to become barely weathered if I look at my source photos so we're gonna go ahead and leave those because the colors actually may match by default all right, so we're just looking at our wood here, and I'm gonna try to do, let's see what it looks like rotated 90 degrees. Yeah, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees because 
I like how the seams lay a little bit better this direction. It looks a little bit more appropriate. I'm not going to do a ton of tweaking on this. Just don't really need to. Like if I wanted to get in here and get really fancy with my seams and stuff, I could, but eh, it's extra time. All right. So we're going to go ahead and call it good on that. And we can turn this back to material. So we take on shading again. And let's go ahead and let's work on our support poles here underneath the roof. Yeah, as I was saying, we got the grain to match kind of what we got on the back here. It's a little bit more low res just because of how, the, how it is. Um, but it doesn't look bad. And I think I, I like that detail more so. Uh, actually, let's play with this some more. Just to see. Just to give you an idea of what I was saying. Because you can see how we get more fine detail in there. It just gets more blurry. Okay, maybe we'll try like eight. Um don't really like those lines. Nine? Okay, yeah, we'll roll with that. We'll roll with nine. That looks a little bit better. You get a little bit more detail in there and it's not as blurry. Alright, and this base material is actually a little bit lighter by default. So I could do this one of two ways. I could make the entire material lighter and then overlay some grunge on top of that to make it darker or I could keep the material the same and I could overlay just like a white color on top to make some areas lighter I think one thing I want to try here first is I think I want to try to take I got a rotten wood in here right here because it looks like that almost, if I look at my source, it almost looks like it's got like a little bit of a greenish hue to it. And this rotten wood kind of has that as well. So let's go ahead and let's just try to do another fill layer and just see how this looks. We're just going to do collar, I think. Base collar. I think this may actually work kind of good. Just lighten it up just a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do a mask. And we'll go down here to surface wear, or surface sworn. And I'm going to drag that mask over onto that. Now let's just see how things look. So it took out quite a bit. Let's go ahead and... Quite often I have to do this with this mask, but we'll invert the mask. And we'll play with the global balance here. Okay, it doesn't seem to be making a lot of changes, so let's go ahead and get rid of our levels so we get rid of our invert here. We'll play with the mask some more, global balance. And I really should be seeing a change here. And really, I'm only seeing it start to pop up along the very bottom. Okay, so maybe we just need to play... Let's invert this again. And I'm just going to play around with some sliders here for a second until I get something usable. Maybe. Okay, that mask just is not going to work. Sometimes some of these just don't work out. I can't get anything remotely close to what I want. So let's maybe we'll try like, uh, let's try like a dirt dusty and just see what it does. And I'm actually going to put this all the way back up to 100. Alright, maybe we'll try something like that 
And I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do another HSL on this. And I'm going to darken that up just a tad. And I'm going to go to my wood and do an HSL on that. Lighten it up just a tad. Because it is pretty bright in real life. And honestly, I'm still not really happy with how this mask turned out. I'm going to play with some settings again. I don't know. Maybe we'll go with something like that. I, I still, I'm not in love with this mask on it. It doesn't look really close to what the reference photo looks like. Um, but I do want something like that on there. And I think maybe what we'll do is we'll just duplicate this layer. And I'm just going to, while we're here, I'm going to throw another couple of masks on there and just see how things look. Okay, I actually like these a lot better. So, dust dirty for the win. We get a lot more of that grunge collection near the bottom of the pool like it is here. A little bit lighter at the top. It's not perfect, but it's a lot closer. Yeah, I think we're going to roll with that. So we'll go ahead and delete that other one. Let's call it Dust Dirty. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to start getting all of our colors kind of tuned in. And actually I got the lights, or the light, and solar panel I need to do real quick. Let's go ahead and do that. These solar panels, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on those just yet. Maybe I should just paint them black like I did the windows, because I don't think I'm going to get enough definition out of them to do any sort of uh, like solar panel texture. Um, let's go ahead and for the light face, we're going to do... Do this plastic glossy, we'll throw that at the top. And I'm going to get rid of the dust and the grunge layers and just leave the plastic base as well as the fill so it gets through that weird kind of ripple. Because we just want something that's kind of flat and glossy. And we're going to get rid of metal, normal, height, and we're just going to leave color and roughness. Because those are all blank values anyways. And then for the base color, um, I'm going to do... What was my... D7. A little bit darker of a white. And we're going to leave everything else as default. So that gives us a nice, like, you can kind of see there, reflective. Alright, now we got everything masked off. So we've got our face of our light painted. But now we need to do the entire shroud around the light. So for that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab our handy machinery material. Throw that in there and we're going to get rid of um, get rid of everything. We'll just use the metal base. So let's just drag that out of the collection there and we can just delete that entire collection. that metal dark because these lights are pretty dark in color and I can get rid of height normal and uh, it doesn't even use metallic so I can get rid of that and we'll just leave color and roughness and then we're gonna use a 
Maybe go just. Oh, let's put the collars just a little bit. It'll darken up a little bit once we have some grunge on it, but there we go. We don't want anything like really dark, but we want it to be dark enough that it doesn't look out of place. So something like that should work really good. Oh, we still got to do the inside here of the uh, roof. Um, it does look a little flat. It would maybe actually, you know, it would kind of look nice to use some of these planks. So let's control Z that. We're going to use the same planks that we used on our walls. So let's just grab one of these. We'll just copy it. Copy layer. Actually, even better yet. Um, let's duplicate layer. Yeah. We'll just delete all of them. So for that one. Exclude all. Throw on that. And we're going to get rid of our mask because we don't need it. Oh, look at that. They're already laying the right direction. And I'm pretty happy with the spacing, too. Alright, I don't think we're going to really have to do anything with that. So, yeah, I like that. That gives us a little bit more detail underneath that roof, other than just having something flat. I think that looks a lot better. So let's rule with that. All right. So next on the list is solar panels. And I think what we're going to do in this case is um, let's copy this glass material. Actually, let's just yeah, let's copy. Yeah, we'll just copy this. I don't think I need that grunge. Copy layer. And then we'll paste layer. And we're going to do that. And I have the solar cells texture that I made, but. I think this is going to be too fine of detail to have in this model because if I look at the boards on the wall, they're already blurry. Um, and this is on a 4K texture, and this is a really small part. So let's just, we'll drop it in here as a base color. I don't think it's going to work though. <laughs> uh, I mean, it doesn't doesn't work but we could run with it just so it looks like there's actually something there let's like let's force it to like 64 for the tiling that almost doesn't look too bad there And I think we'll just lose a little bit of roughness off of it. Or add a little bit more roughness, I guess. So we still want them to be somewhat shiny. Try something like that, maybe? So you get a little bit of light, light flare off of them. But I almost wonder what would happen if I did... Uh, is it generator or filter? Yeah, sharpen. I just add a little bit of a sharpen to it. Just to kind of get some of that detail to pop out. And I'm only doing it on the collar channel. 
Okay, but we need to deselect that one. And then we duplicate. And we need to rotate this one. That way is they're all on the same orientation. There, that doesn't look half bad, I don't think. And I'm going over to... Heck, uh, actually they're pretty reflective, aren't they? If I go over and I look at my... My source image here, you can clearly see like tree branches and stuff in it. So it's pretty reflective. So I may go back here and I may do... Heck, I may just do full reflectivity. Yeah, we'll just do full reflectivity. Um, I wonder if there's a way. Is there a... I could do... Because it's got, like, compression artifacting in there. That's why you can see different colors in it. I think what I'll do... Is I'll do another mask. Or another filter, I mean. HSL. And I'll just pull the... So, and I'll just pull the saturation all the way down on it. Yeah, I don't think I need to play around with any of that. Copy effect. Paste onto that layer. Um, paste effect. There we go. No, it's kind of monochromatic. There's no color data in there anymore. So that looks decent at a distance. However, if we drop it to 2K, it's probably going to look like a uh, smear. But <laughs> only Xbox is going to see it like that, or people on low-end PCs. So we should be good. All right. We are crossing the two-hour threshold here on this recording, I guess probably plus 30 minutes so maybe an hour and, or two and a half hours we're at I think on this since I had to stop the video or stop the recording that one time um what else we need to start tweaking on our collars now and I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna look at our resource here or our source image and this closer end photo here it's actually a little bit better lighting conditions, so it's very overcast, as you can see, because it's a winter day. The sun is still pretty low, but the lighting conditions are a lot more fair, and you can get a better idea of just what everything looks like. And actually, for the underside of that roof, they just did chipboard. But you know what? I think I'm going to pull a Creative Liberty card on this one, because <laughs> I uh, I really like the planks there, and I'm going to do the planks instead. Chipboard's just... it's just boring. It's the same repeating texture. But, you know, planks are nice. It gives you something else to look at. <clears throat> and, and plus, I really like this... really like this material. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, okay, that's enough looking at that. Oh, and you may notice also, I'll just point this out while we're here. In this preview photo, you can see how there's plywood over the doors and windows and stuff. That's boarded up, basically, for the summer. So if they are not staying at this cabin, you will board up all your windows and doors and stuff basically to keep bears out. So that's why it's like that, but in reality, <laughs> there's actually windows and a door there. Um, that's your fun fact of the day, I guess. I am going to go ahead and, I guess, start on these wood planks down here. And I think I'm going to go for a pretty overall... Yeah, I'm going to go with some, some pretty overall worn wood, I think. So let's go ahead and, and we'll close that group up. We'll go down here to our wood for these here. 
and let's see which is the one in front. We'll do that one. We'll do add filter. We're gonna do an HSL again. And this is where I gotta go to my cheat sheet of values to get me somewhere close, just because I have some stuff that gets me in the ballpark of where I want. And the real question is, is how dark do I wanna go? Let's try to go the full like worn desaturated wood. So let's try that top hue is gonna stay the same. We're gonna try 0 0.094 for the saturation. Lightness, let's go ahead and go with 0 0.347. And then we're going to add another filter on here. Color only. Contrast. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull some of that detail, the grain detail, out of it. And we are only going to adjust our contrast value here. So we'll play... Or we'll punch in 0 0.574 is what I have in. And you can see how that adds a little bit more detail as well as it kind of makes a little bit more of the collar pop out as well. So we get this nice grain to it. And if we go over and we look at, obviously it's not going to be the same because this is more like railroad tie wood on this. But we can see how we got that dark collar, right? And what we'll probably end up doing is we'll go with like a base of this and then we'll use some grunge to kind of help bring out that like that dark patchy look to it because if you look at the base material the lighter sections of it it's about the right color and really we're just going to do this all the way around so easiest thing we can do as we just go ahead and copy the effects. And I wonder, I've never tried this. Can I copy both at the same time? It does say copy effects. And paste effects. Yeah. Yeah, so all that wood is nice now. And now we need to go up to our wood too. And because this one's colored, it's going to be a little bit differently. So we may need to tweak this just a little bit. But we'll go ahead and we'll paste these effects on as well. And actually, it's like it's not that bad. It's a little darker. But heck, actually, the roof. This is what I'm using around the roof, and it's darker, anyways. As well as all the window frames. Maybe not the front frames as much. Now we may have to play with that a little bit, but let's go ahead and let's just paste it on there. Get the full spread all the way around. And what we'll do is we'll just pull out quite a little bit more lightness back to it. That looks pretty good. Let's wonder what saturation. We'll just do that. We'll just add a little bit of saturation and lightness back to it. And we'll copy the new HSL. Paste it in and make sure we have our contrast on top of the HSL. There we go. Subtly a little bit different and this roof, I mean, it's got a lot of, it's pretty dark. If I go back over here and I look in this photo, the roof edges are pretty dark, but that's because it's got a lot of grunge on it. And I think that'll really, uh, once I start adding some grunge and stuff to this, I think that'll kind of come together. So we'll just kind of go with that and see how it goes. Worst case, I can make this its own layer and come back and just have separate HSL values for that if I really need to fine tune it some more. All right. So that is the wood done. And what we need to do now is let's take a look at the plywood under the roof. That's honestly already pretty close. We could go with maybe a little bit of lighter plywood. So let's try, I'll add an HSL back on it.
And this is it's the plywood here. It's so flat that it's like when you're doing the lightness adjustment, and it just makes it look really flat. So I don't like doing that if I don't have to. Let's go to the base color. That actually looks pretty good there. So we're just bringing a little bit more color into that, a little bit more lightness into it. So we're kind of matching that base wood a little bit better. And obviously it's going to look darker right now because it's in shadow. And I wonder what would happen if I threw a contrast on this as well. Oh yeah. Well, the contrast kind of brings it together a little bit more, huh? So pretty dull gray there. And just adding a little bit more color back to it. Just ties it in a little bit better. And if I go back to my base color, you can really see it. It's really tied together good now. Goes from pretty drab to little bit more colorful even though you got to be pretty sparing on those settings when you have a pretty flat material like that because it can really blow some colors out of proportion okay and next we need to take care of this eyesore which is the top of the deck because that looks absolutely nothing like the rest of the wood so we're gonna make that all nice and drab as well so we'll go to our deck layer Grab our top planks, and we'll say add a filter. We are only going to use an HSL for this. And we're going to follow our same settings here. Actually, you know what? Maybe it would be better if I just go to the wood here. And we'll just copy the HSL from it as our starting point, because that's what we're going to punch in anyways. Paste. And then all we have to do now is we go in here and we just tweak it a little bit. A little less saturated. We're going to change the hue just a little bit. Actually, let's go ahead and we'll bump our saturation up so we can see what we're doing here. Basically, we got a really yellow wood. So what we're going to try to do is we want just a little bit warmer of a color. So something like that. And then we can bring our saturation back down. Maybe. Get the value I want. Something like that. And maybe we'll just play with our lightness just a little bit. Ah, I kind of like what it was at before. Something like that. So we're just kind of tying all these materials together so that they're all complementary to each other and not too contrasty. I think I like that. I think, I'm, I think we'll roll with that. I could add, so we're at 205 for the saturation. Add just, oh, well, I just brought it back to 205, so yeah, we'll just go with 205. That looks pretty good. Um, if I wanted to make it pop, I could go and take this contrast and try to throw some contrast on there to maybe pull a little bit more detail out of it. I just feel like it's going to overdo it. But it's not going to make it look as flat. Let's put that to... Eh, whatever, we'll just drag it. There, now we're just pulling a little bit more detail out of that material. That looks pretty good, I think. Doesn't make it look nearly as flat. Let's go ahead and save while we're at it. And we're going to take a look at the colors of our window frames here. I'm pretty satisfied with those, I think. And the, uh, the wood, or the log texture for the wall, looking at my reference photo, is actually pretty close. 
I don't know that I'm going to really do too much tweaking on that. Just make sure our fronts lit pretty good here. And I think we'll, uh... Heck, I almost don't even want to change this wood up top. But I think just to see what it looks like, let's go ahead and copy these effects and paste it on this plank here. So that we get the bottom side colored the way we want it. We're going to go to walls. Let's show you the front. We'll do an HSL on this. Color only. Yeah, let's just maybe... Um, put it the hue, maybe? Because the only thing I'm noticing is it's maybe a little bit yellow. Honestly, I don't know if I like the yellow in it, though. I kind of like that more, like, rich, woody color. Let's look at it from a distance. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think I'm going to leave it. I think I like it just the way it is. Mm, okay. So, what do we have left? Um, I guess we can look at the wood ends for the logs. Everything else is kind of colored the way I want it to be. The underside's all done. That wouldn't hurt. I need to probably go put a metal plate on the roof for this chimney. So I can do that real quick. And that's pretty much the same thing as what we did before. So where is my aluminum? There it is. Copy. And it's rough. And just because I want this to be a separate alpha channel, I'm going to throw it into this collection here. And I'm going to throw another white mask on top of that so that we're not painting on the same mask. I should have done this a while ago while we were doing the roof. And we're going to go back we're going to grab our square brush again. Uh, actually, it looks like it's already selected. Yeah, it's already selected. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a square plate. Just eyeballing the, the gap on each side of the pipe there. Do something like that. So we exclude the roof. And then we're going to copy this mask. Um, I forgot to paste the aluminum in though. Eh, that's okay. We'll just, I'll just drag in another aluminum. Should be this one right here. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take the brushes out. And then we'll go ahead and we will click on that and say paste into mask. And then we're going to invert our mask. There, we got a nice aluminum plate there. And then we are going to take our aluminum base. We already got a height channel on it, and we're just going to drag that up until we get a little bit of height on it, like so. There we go. Something a little smaller. There we go. Now we got a nice sharp edge, but it's not too big. It doesn't look too thick. We'll call it good on that. And that's just kind of separating that out from the roof. Makes it look a little more natural, blend in a little bit more. Alright, and we are getting towards the end of the road here on this model. So really all we have left to do is uh, grunge. I think. I don't think I'm missing anything. I got the light. Solar panels. Windows are all good. Frames are all good. Wood's good. Roof. Yeah, we're on to the grunge stage now. 
Okay. So we'll throw a new layer in there. And I'm just going to do color and roughness for this. I'm going to drag that all the way down to just straight black. And then for the roughness, uh, let's just punch in for now 0 0.6. And we can adjust this. We need to really look at our uh, how it lays over different materials and kind of judge what we want that to be for our base layer. But what I usually like starting out is I'll do dust dirty right here. Drop that to that channel. So that just gives a nice little bit of wear over the entire thing. And I will take and uh, first and foremost lower opacity because what we're looking for is we're just looking to add a base layer of grunge. So we want it to kind of just start to be noticeable on it like so. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and I'm going to turn on roughness. And what I'm looking for here is anything that is really bright white is rougher and anything that is more like that gray or darker color is going to be more shiny. And I'm just going to kind of tick this layer off and on to see where things stand. And as I can see, it's making it more shiny than it is rough. So we want this layer to be rougher than what we have on our base layer because it's it's a dirt overlay, right? It's dulling it down. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and adjust my roughness value and maybe we'll say like, we'll just go up 0 0.1 each time and say 7. Okay, and as we tick this off and on, now we can see that the layers are actually getting more roughness added to them, even if they're maybe a little bit shinier here and there. Overall, it's more rough than what we have for our base material, which is what we want. So if we come back out and we tick that on and off again, we can kind of see the changes that it is making along our entire model. And we're just getting a really nice amount of grunge there. Um, now one thing I am, or sorry, two things I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the overall uh, parent folder here and I'm going to go around to all my windows. I do not want any of these grunge layers in here to affect my window glass because I want to keep this as shiny as possible. Um, I'm going to do the same for the solar panel glass as well. I would much rather go back into that individual collection if I want to add any grunge and do the grunge there so I have more control over it. Because this here, it's going to grunge up those windows really fast and I got a lot of layering going on. So we'll just do that so that we're not taking on any grunge for those windows besides the you know grunge we put along or the outside of the windows when we first did those. And then as I do with all my layers, I'm going to actually name it what I put as the mask so that if I ever want to go back and reference what it is, I can. Save it real quick because I don't remember when the last time I saved was. We're going to throw another layer in here and same deal. And maybe for this one, we're going to do, because this is going to be a little bit more grunge, we're going to do like 0 0.8 so that we're stacking our layers of grunge on top of each other. And for this one, I think what I want to do is I want to go back to the cavities. And we'll say dirt cavities. And what we're going to use this one for is it's going to really build up, as you can see, along those seams and along edges and stuff like that. So, but you can see it's pretty overkill by default, right? So what we really need to do is we really just need to crank this opacity way down on it. And actually, one thing I forgot to do, let's do this real quick, is I do not want this on the door or the doorknob. Because I want to leave those pretty clean. 
And I may even go back and do that for these windows, honestly. We'll see here in a minute. But what we want is we want to put this in where we just start seeing a little bit of an effect, like on the door on your brightest material. And, you know, we're not. Let's just let's go with an even number here. We'll just punch in 20. <laughs> and we'll just kind of tick it on and off here a couple times. Um, there we go. And we can kind of just see how that is now separating out those different layers of material. So it looks a little flatter, then you add that in. It's kind of just, it's kind of just separating things out, making them look a little bit more broken apart. And then, let's go ahead and name this one. We'll add another layer in here. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do Dirt Dusty. But I am only going to do this one here. Do exclude all for the deck. And these boards here, the staircase. Um, those boards, we'll do it for the undersides as well. Yeah, I'm only going to do it for the lower extremities here. It's not really doing anything to that deck, is it? Oh, because my grunge layer's... Okay, yeah, and that's another thing. Always make sure when you're doing your grunge that your folder is all the way at the top of the stack. That way it is covering everything. Because as you can see now, we just covered a lot more. So we've got a grunge stack at the top now. Let's go ahead. I'm going to throw it on that just for a moment. Nah, I don't really need it on that, I don't think. And we're just going to take... Let's go ahead and just... Change the name of that. And we're going to pull this down a little bit. So we start getting a nice little amount of grunge there. And we're going to step up our roughness one more. And let's do... God, I don't know what I want to do for this one. Let's just try to throw a couple different ones in here and see how things look. This actually doesn't look bad for that. Definitely overbearing on the roof. <laughs> but for the deck, it doesn't look bad. It adds a pretty nice little layer of grunge there. I don't think I'm going to use it for that, though. So I'm going to do remove mask. Because really what I'm looking for is I only want it for these wood, the wood here at the bottom. So, let's see what we got. Maybe... Dust Soft? Nah, that's not enough. Edges Blur? That... could work. What we need to do, though, is we need to, oops, let's just do exclude all and only put it on these here. Maybe even throw it up there. So what we're trying to do is we're really just trying to grunge up these pieces down here. And I'm going to go and I'm just going to play with the mask here for a second. Global contra or global balance, I mean. I 
Okay. I mean, I guess that's pretty good by default. Let's go ahead and, uh, what do I do? Edges blur. I kind of like that one. I need to, uh... I need to mask this, though, so let's shove this into a collection. We'll add a white mask. I'm just gonna go along the top here. And I want to take it off of the green, because I want it on the wood, but I don't want to overdo the metal, and it's pretty overdone on the metal right now. There we go. Oh, we're getting a nice little bit of grunge on the roof there. What do we have affecting that? Dust dirty... Wow, just really dusty. So just a light layer of dust. Looks pretty good. Now I almost worry though about these logs here being maybe a little too dark as we add grunge on top of them. I almost may consider Just taking that off. Ah. I'll throw it back on. It may be the dark patches that's kind of doing it. And I need to check the door and make sure it's not getting like too grunged up. Check that off. We have that on it. That's only affecting those. That's only affecting that. Okay. So that should be good. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take these dirt cavities off of the doorknob. So we get that metallic shining through. Heck, I may even... I don't even know if I want that much grunge on those window frames, actually. That's pretty, uh... It's pretty grunged up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take this off of all the white frames. We need to check the chimney as well, because that can get quite a bit of buildup on it. When we're doing these layers. As well as that light glass. I mean, overall, it doesn't look too bad, I guess. It's got a lot of grunge on it. We'll back it off a little bit. That looks a little better. Keep some of that shine. We got that window already, I think, didn't we? Yep. And then Dirt Cavities is already adding some grunge to it. As we can see there, as we tick Dirt Cavities on and off. And we also got to remember that this is going to light and look a little bit different in the sim versus how it does here in Substance Painter in this preview mode, so... We just need to keep that in mind. <laughs> as far as this light here goes... Yeah, I'm gonna take that off. Let's, how's the housing look? I'm gonna take it off the housing, too. Because dirt cavities should already... Yeah, I'd be giving it a little bit of grunge there, soften it up, because I want to keep it fairly reflective. I don't even know. We have to remove that from dirt cavities, anyways. Yeah, we're gonna remove from dirt cavities just to keep that reflectivity to it. 
Chances are it's not going to have that much dust anyways on it, depending on the angle. All right. Now the fun thing you can do here is let's get rid of the UI. Let's drag this over so we maximize our view space here. And actually I need the UI <laughs> because I need to toggle this on and off. But it's cool to just grab your you know, upper level parent grunge container here and just kind of toggle back and forth between it just to kind of see what all the grunge layers are doing to your model. And you'll see how things really get tied together when you use these. It goes from a fairly clean model, right, to something that's pretty nicely grunged up. And, you know, you can go with more or less grunge, however you really see fit. I'm almost halfway tempted to throw a different material on these logs. So I'm, let me do that real quick. I'm going to use the same material I used for my support poles, which I think was this right here. Yep. I'll use that. Whoops. Helps if I'm on the right layer first. What's more prevalent here? We'll do it on this one. Let's go ahead and save. Yeah, and I'm just going to throw it on this. I do almost like that better. step back yeah because it's the, the logs that are on the cabin are actually a little bit cleaner they're not nearly as patchy so having the dirt grunge on there now actually helps add some of that patchiness to it and really ties things together and I could even do like a 50 50 thing I guess depending on let's see here just how many of these are used throughout. Could even do something just like that where I just change up the albedo and it's just adding a little bit of difference throughout there. But the entire thing is not like the same patchy dark stuff, right? So it makes it look a little bit more broken up. And I think, honestly, I'm just going to use the same uh, roughness and normal for it, even though it's, the texture is slightly different. The grains are going the same way. We'll throw, uh, let's see, make sure I'm looking at the right ones. Yep. We'll throw this normal on there. Ah. Throw the roughness on there as well. Okay, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll use the right roughness and normal for it. That looks pretty good still. They're so close. One's just more grungy than the other. Yeah, I definitely... I think I like that better. It doesn't stand out as much. And I'm almost thinking maybe also a little less grunge on this deck. Maybe do like 45. There. So we're still getting some nice grunge on it, but it's not as overdone now. A little bit more subtle. Alright, I think I like that. And really the only things I have to do now 
is I really need to go back in here and I need to move this doorknob from the right hand side to the left hand side and I need to fix this gap right here. But other than that, I think I call that good for the texturing. Yeah, it looks good. And I guess one thing I'll go over here before I wrap this video up is, you know, how do I choose whether I'm going to do a 2K or a 4K texture based on textile density? I'm, I, I'm not really doing any form of, like, calculations when I'm doing this. That's really just eyeballing it. And I guess maybe this just kind of comes with experience in doing it for so long. Um, I'm going to hit save again. But if I drop this down to 2048, we're going to notice that things like these wood planks are going to get really blurry. So you see how blurry they get. I mean, you could definitely use, like, th if this is a secondary building, like, out in the middle of nowhere, yeah, definitely you could use something like this. But also, something that I am thinking of from my perspective, since this is going to be a payware scenery that I'm releasing to... Uh, marketplace, so it's gonna go on an Xbox, right? Well, on Xbox, you're not running texture settings on Ultra. So in the simulator, if you're running your texture settings on Ultra, that means your albedo, your comp, and your normal texture are all running at full resolution, 1, 1, 1. If you are on high settings on your simulator, or if you're playing on Xbox, it means that your albedo is 1, your comp is 0 0.5 and your normal is 0 0.5 so your comp and your normal go down the half resolution so you will still have whatever detail if I go back to 4096 here and it takes a second to go back and forth maybe I should have explained that on 4096 come on now there we go you go like into your base color here right so this is what you're seeing in your albedo right now so you can see that we got a little bit of detail in these planks, right? We got most of our detail in the lines here. Um, this wood here, you know, there's some good detail in it. All around, there's pretty good detail. So even on high settings, you're going to be seeing this for your albedo. I can't really demonstrate that in substance painter because it's kind of all or nothing like i gotta take it down to either 2k or 4k for all the textures i can't really step them but you can imagine at if you have this at 4k right like on xbox this is what you would be seeing for like roughness right you'd be seeing this for roughness you know me well metallic's not really a good example ambient would be like that you know, that, that's what you're seeing in, uh, let's say, normal as well. So at 4K on Xbox, this is the detail you'd be seeing. However, if I said, okay, I want to take this texture and export it as a 2048, a 2K texture, so that it looks like this. Like, it would look like this on maximum ultra settings in the sim, right? Well, now you got to remember, if I'm putting this on Xbox, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look like this. watercolors right now your albedo of course is going to be potentially full resolution at so it doesn't look you know nearly as bad so if you went back to 2k and you looked at your albedo or just your base color here this is you know this is what it would look like uh, except for like on series s and cloud gaming sometimes it will pull the texture resolution down even more depending on if it's running out of texture memory or whatever but for the most part you know like on series x this is what you would see um you know however all your other textures roughness ambient which is packed in with roughness into the comp and also your normal would all look like this on xbox so it just looks really low res so at a distance this doesn't look bad right and you could definitely get away with this like if you needed to spare the texture memory i mean 4k does eat up a lot more texture memory than 2k but 
I mean, uh, when I'm doing bigger buildings like this, like this is a fairly good sized cabin with a lot of parts on it. Or a lot more so than like the cabin I modeled in my last video. I almost have to, if I'm trying to pack everything on a texture sheet, I almost have to use a 4K just to get a good texel density out of it. But, you know, for everything else, I'm trying to use at least 2K when I can. Um, I'm very limiting with what I do with 4K now just to keep a good level of text, you know, a good level of overhead still in the texture memory, basically. So that's pretty much how I decide what texture resolution I'm going to use is uh, I just eyeball it. And I think about the overhead. I don't, uh, just because something looks really good, don't pressure yourself into exporting out a 4K. Uh, only export out a really high resolution if you absolutely need to. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get carried away and before you know it, you're going to go from you know, uh, 100 megabytes of texture memory, the 700 megabytes of texture memory. You know, it's really easy to do. I've done it before. I'm trying to come back from that and really rethink, you know, what I'm doing for textures. And in some cases, you know, I'm trying to start to use more tiling textures now for other models as well. You know, if, if there's a chance I can share any form of texture between models, I try to do that just so I don't eat into more of that overhead by packing it all in a texture sheet. But, I mean, if you're painting in Substance Painter at the end of the day, you do have to pack it into this texture sheet here. And, you know, I, I know I said I was going to go back and I was going to look at these logins here. I may play around with it, but I think I'm going to call it pretty much good on this video for now. And... I may come back and do these logins at a later date if I really decide to do them. Uh, this video is going on over three hours now, <laughs> and I wanna, I wanna make it so that you're not spending a significant part of your day watching it. So this is pretty much the finished product. This is what it's gonna look like when it's done when I export the textures. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and export the textures and let's close out this video, shall we? So we got our textures size set back to 4096 here. I am going to go over to export textures. And I need to bring up my window, wherever that is, over here. And I have a folder called textures that I export into. So I'm just going to go over and copy that folder directory. And we'll paste it in here. I have my own export template that I use for this. I do have a video that I have recorded on this. I will put a card up in the top here. So once you're done watching this video, you can come back to this section if you want and you can look at that. I'll also, I'll, I'll make it easy for you. If I can remember, I'll link it down in the description as well. So if you don't see a card up top in the top right corner, because I do know some people have that turned off, it will be down in the description showing you kind of the process I go through. For making this export template. We're going to choose 16-bit, always export as 16-bit, and then I like to do dilation plus default background color. We'll click on cabin 13 over here. We're just double checking our settings. I don't have an emissive, so I'm just going to uncheck that. It's not going to export it either way. And then we'll export it. And we'll go ahead and save settings here at the bottom. And before I get done working on my model, I always come down here and say, remove unused resources. As well as go in here and hit save and reduce file size. And basically what that's doing is it's just going in there and it's flushing out any like, if you bake your maps, your mesh maps multiple times, it's going in there and it's flushing all that, you know, old junk texture out and then compressing it down as small as it can get it. Um, I also have a video I did on how to decrease your Substance Painter file size for storage. I'll also link that down in the description below. And that's like, if you are done with the project and you're not planning on touching it for a little while, take a look at that video, you can follow that, and you can get your file size down even smaller with a couple more tricks on here. 
but because I'm going to be coming back into this almost immediately after I end this video to fix a couple of things I listed out, I'm not going to cover that in this video. Anyways guys, thanks for joining me on the Substance Painter painting session. Hopefully this has been somewhat informative for you. If you stuck with it for the full couple hours here, congratulations, so you have more patience than I do. Um, <laughs> my throat is shot, once again. I, I need to take a break before I come back and fix some of this stuff. So I'm going to go do that. Anyways, guys, until next time, Rotorant44, over and out.